everybody. Um, I'm Lori from Art Lore Fluid Acrylics, and today I'm going to be doing my version of a deconstructed bloom. There is no um, right or wrong way to do this. This is just my way. I watch a ton of videos and I try to copy people and it just doesn't work. So I decided to just give it a go and I'm liking the results and people have been asking me to share what I do. And so this is my first video. So um, I'm just gonna jump in head first and dive right into this and give it a go. And hopefully this will all work out. Uh, first of all, I'd like to go over my paint colors with you. Um, I'm going to be using uh, the Liquid Tex uh, dioxazine purple and I added a little bit of deco art purple pearl to it to give it a little bit of a shimmer. The next one is Artist Love Turquoise and it's a pretty blue. The next one is Liquitex Deep Violet and that is also a beautiful, beautiful color. And then the last but not least is Artist Love Vermilion and I added just a scant of white in there just to kind of break up the intensity of the vermilion. It's quite orange and I didn't want it to be like fluorescent orange. So I um, put just a scant of white in there just to kind of break that up. Um, my pouring medium is uh, the Bear 8300, the Deep Base, and the Sherwin-Williams Infinity Base C. And then I do uh, the Min Wax poly, uh, Polycrylic and the Clear Gloss. And what I do is I do equal parts of the Bear in the Infinity, and then I give that a good stir, and that consistency is quite nice. Let me grab, grab my pouring medium here. That consistency is really nice, but I like to get that stirred up first, and then I add in... Um, those two are equal parts, so one part and one part, and then half part of the polycrylic clear gloss. And then I do that last. And this is my pouring medium. And as you can see, it's not super thick. You know, a lot of people say, you know, running off like warm honey for the paint. You know what, I, I, I don't even know what warm honey looks like. So for me, I call it melted ice cream because you've got that frothiness in there and then you've got the melted ice cream going on in there. And I just, I don't know, I just kind of look at it as like melted ice cream. That's my version of that. And then of course, here's my pillow. And my pillow is the color place, bright white. You get that at um, Walmart and I do the satin. And then I add the GAC 800 for the cracking and the crazing. And then I also add in there some American Floetrol just to give it, you know, a little bit more extension to the paint. And when I pour it on, um, I already have it on my canvas. I like to, um, you know, have it in my center and then work it out to the sides. But I like to cover all my sides. I just spill it over the edge and I rub it all in, give it a good smooth uh, movement on the, on the sides. And then I'm ready to go because once I give this a spin, it's going to fall over to the side. You are going to have little, you know, naked areas. Um, and then I take, I take a spoon. I actually use a spoon and I scoop up and then I can just pour over the parts that I missed. But there's, it's not bare canvas. There actually is paint there, but it's not bare canvas. And then you can fill it in a little easier. So, okay, so here we go. We're going to give this a go and see what happens. We're going to start with the dioxazine purple. And I, on this size here, um, I don't remember what size it is, hold on. This is a 12 by 16. And what I like to do is on this particular size is for sure two blooms, um, possibly three, but two would be better. I. Um, this does not want to stay still. I don't know why that always moves. Somebody please tell me. Ah, please stop. There we go. Okay, so when you have your paint in the center 
and you spin it out, it's pulling everything and stretching everything, which is what you want to do. So if you put your blooms too far to the edge, you're going to spin them off. So I like to try and incorporate whatever direction you want your blooms to be. I like, you know, one here and possibly one over here. So I want the biggest bloom on the bottom and the smaller one on the top. And some of that will come off, which is okay. That's what I want. I try to get them as close together as possible. And I do one at a time. I don't spin, but I blow them out one at a time so that I can see where this one first is going and then add my second one. So I want the bloom to be here and then I want another one here. So we're going to start right about, let's start right about there. And I like to do a good portion of paint. When you're doing blooms on tile, of course, you don't want a whole lot of paint. You do want a little bit of paint on there. Uh, because the tiles are tiny, four by four. Um, and I like to, you know, add quite a bit of paint because that way then I know that I'm going to get a good coverage and I'm going to extend that bloom. I'm going to, after I'm done blowing, I'm going to continue and blow some more. Now, I like to do a little shape of a flower. And the reason for that is when I extend my bloom, I want those petals to have a little bit of color on the ends. So I just kind of go in and just be really messy, nothing perfect. As, as the word is de deconstructed, you want it as deconstructed as possible to give it that more of that contemporary feel. And I just kind of go in and throw in a little bit of paint. And here we go with the fun orange. I hope these colors, whoop, looks like there's a gloop in there somewhere. I'll get it later, I guess. I hope these colors do well. I struggle with colors. I don't know. I see other people do colors, and oh my goodness, they just, oh, they have such wonderful uh, uh, vision and eye for interesting colors together, and I just, I don't know, man. I struggle. But we'll see how this works today. All right, and here's my cell activator, which is the Australian Floetrol and the uh, black uh, Amsterdam, which is the Oxide Black, and it's three to one. All right, you'll probably see my big head in the way, so I apologize for that in advance. Put that over there, here we go. That's looking pretty good. I guess the colors aren't so bad. Now you can leave this, which I find looks pretty cool. Once you spin it out, this I don't like, this I do like. So I'm going to incorporate some of this into one of the petals. You see how I'm elongating the petals? I continue to push that paint out so it creates those petals to not be so compact. It gives them a much more elongated look so that when you spin this, it's going to really pull those petals and create a nice flow over the edge. This is looking quite pretty, but it's a little too short, so I'm going to extend that. Pretty good there. Now these two are a little too close. So I'm going to put a little bit of white in there and just break that up so it so we have a little bit more of a petal going on.
extending that out a little more. There, that's looking pretty cool. Much better. All right, so now we're going to add our other bloom right there. Now, if you want, you can stay in the same uh, order that the colors were, or you could put a whole different uh, color palette there if you wanted, or you could just add a couple colors from this series of colors. Whatever you want to do is awesome. Um, I think I'm going to stick with the same color palette that I did here because most of it's going to come off anyway. So I'm going to make sure that the petals that I have going up at the top are going to really have a good portion of color so that will really spread out and flow into the into these petals as well. Let me get my stopper there. All right, doxazine purple. A little bit of a deco art. Artist Lock Turquoise. Put a little bit there in the center. And then we have the Paper Tech State Violet. Ooh, that's kind of pretty just the way it is. I don't know if I want the orange in there. Uh, come on, tell me, tell me, tell me. Um, hmm, maybe I'll just drizzle a scant of it in the center and just a little bit in the centers of the petals. Excuse me. And then I think, because I forgot to go around, I'm going to go around with some purple. And the cool thing of this is too, that if you don't like your bloom, you, this once you get to this part of it all, you can just scrape it off, pour some white on there, start over, um, I think I want to also let me grab a spoon here. I noticed that it's not real full of paint here because I want these to come off. So I'm going to add, oh, cat hair. I gotta get that out of there. Oh, I tell ya, I have cat hair everywhere and I vacuum in here all the time. It's on me, it's everywhere. And I don't let her in here, I just, oh my gosh. It's like Pigpen from Charlie Brown. I'll put a little bit here so that I can really ensure that these petals will stretch once I spin. I want that corner covered pretty well. All right, now the cat hair, where'd you go? Mm, you're hiding now. Well, hopefully you'll spin off. So I think I need to add just a scant more over here because I really want that to spin off. Okay. I'll activate her, and then my head will be in the way. And here we go. paint there. There we 
Jawohl. Very nice. Okay, add just a little bit more paint right here. I want to make sure that that all goes off. I love using spoons, by the way. It really helps, and you can scoop it up so nice. I'm going to extend these out just a little more. Alrighty. Okay, so now we pray to the spinning gods and hopefully everything will spin as planned. Up myself here, and here we go. Oh, yeah, okay, I can see where I need to get a little more paint, which is good. And I don't mind these little dots of paint to me. I think it just looks kind of fun and contemporary and uh, abstract. I don't mind that at all. It's part of um, the whole process of creating this effect. I think it's fun. See how nicely the spoon can just fill in those little areas. I will come back later for this in more detail, but I want to get that one, uh, I want to get this bloom here off the canvas. So I'm going to spin it just a little bit more. And we're going to go the other way. And I like my paints rather thin because I like them to dry thin. Um, I tend to use a lot of paint, and so I wanna make sure that everything is coming off that should be coming off. Okay, let's go this way one more time. There, that is really pretty. I don't know if I actually want this to come off. Um, I kind of like it where it's just kissing the edge of the canvas. I think that looks kind of pretty. Um, put my stopper there. Um, yeah, I am very happy with this. So that is how I do my deconstructed blooms. So one more little thing I want to point out. Do you see how there's the orange in there? I don't mind that, but if that bugged you and you really wanted to create your petal, all you need to do is take your spoon, a clean, the clean one, and scoop all that out. And with your spoon, gently pour back in your white, and that will give you the definition. But I don't mind the orange there. I like it because to me, it's very abstract and it just gives a very cool look to it all. So I'm actually going to take you down and I'm going to show you what it looks like.
from this perspective. Oh. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing here, so you'll have to apologize. What if I do that? There. I'm so sorry, I know I'm lame, but whatever. You know, you have to start somewhere and this is where I'm starting. And I appreciate your patience, but I think it turned out beautiful. So thank you so much for watching. And I hope that this is the first of very many videos. And thank you so much again, bye-bye.